welcome to the English with Kirsty podcast from www.englishwithkirsty.com. Here I'll be sharing with you tips, information and other learning resources so that you can improve your business English. Welcome to episode 198 of the English with Kirsty podcast. So today is a bit more of a personal episode because I'd like to share some things with you that I've learned recently because I think as a teacher it's really good to be um, open to learning new things and interested in learning new things, which is why I've had various language learning projects throughout my, well, my, my life now and before I was a teacher. Um, but I think it's important to, to learn as well and I think it's important to review whether you're talking about learning a language or if you have your own business or whatever you're doing sometimes it's good just to take a few minutes to look at things that are working and things that maybe aren't working so you can see what you want to do more of and what you want to maybe stop doing or you want to change something about what you're doing and learning a new language is a good time to think about that but also when you want to change something or when you want to work a bit harder on your language skills it's good to kind of look back, see what's worked for you and what hasn't, and then move forward in a way that's going to be beneficial for you. So this is about my experience, but maybe some of the things that I've learned or that I've realised will be helpful for other people as well. So I started by thinking about learning German, which is a language that I use at work now all the time. um, I started at school and I I got my German to a, a fairly decent level. And Turkish, which I I did for some time, I got fairly good at understanding, never really got past the fear of speaking, as I did with German. Um, And I have other priorities now, so it's not really my my main focus. It's not not really a focus at all for the Turkish. And then Romania is the one that I'm working harder on at the moment because it's a newer language. And I thought, okay, what can I learn from my experiences with German and Turkish that I can then used to make my experience with Romanian better. And that's what I'm going to share today, some things that I've learned and that will hopefully be useful for you as well. Okay, so let's start with things that are going well, things that things that worked. So the first thing is, you know, you have to keep you have to keep at it. You have to keep working. It's not a miracle where you just wake up one day and you can speak a language. You work hard and you will get results. You have to be working hard on the right things because some people Even teachers encourage their students to to make their life really hard and to do work that keeps them busy but doesn't necessarily bring results. And I don't advocate doing that um, because it can it can feel very discouraging and it, it takes a lot of time. But certainly do the things that are going to bring you results. Find what you want to learn, find what you want to achieve, because then it'll be much easier to to get there. Um and, and keep working at it. It's something that you commit to. Uh, if you want to learn a language, if you want to improve a language skills, you have to commit to putting some time and effort into doing that. It's it's not just going to happen by itself. The second thing, do different things, because sometimes I, I know I've had clients who just get to this stage where they're like, I'm bored, I'm bored, <laughs> not really with learning English, but with doing the same things. Like, I'm bored of this book, if they've been using a book. I don't tend to use books, but some classes do, or I'm bored watching the same kinds of films or I'm I'm bored with whatever other activity they were doing, learning vocabulary or something. But, you know, some things just have to be done because, you know, they are boring, but you need to you need to do them to get the to get the knowledge that you need. But you don't need to do exactly the same things all the time. Um, and it's like cooking. I, I never cook the same thing all week at home. We, we have different things because I would get bored with the same thing all week. And um I know some people like to do that, but I I don't want to do that. And most of the people that I work with like the variety. So it's important to to do different things because then you won't get bored. So that could be reading something or listening to something or talking to someone. But make it varied so that it feels all of these things are somehow contributing to your English, but they're not all the same thing every day, every week, because that can get really monotonous. So also when the, another thing is find things that work for you. And I think this takes some time because, you know, when you're at school, you have to do what everyone else is doing. But when you're not, when you're an adult, 
it's really good to find things that work for you. And I don't mean things that you like doing, because there are things that I definitely like doing more than other things. I'm talking more about the way that you get somewhere. You know, it, if you're going somewhere, there can be more than one way to get there. And you can choose the one, maybe you want the quickest one, maybe you want the one with the most beautiful scenery, or maybe you just want the one that you know, because you, you don't want to learn another way to get to a place that you, you already know one way to get there. But in terms of language learning, think about how you probably should develop some li listening skills, but how you do that is up to you. Do you want to listen to films? Do you want to listen to other people? Do you want to listen to something that is just audio content? The same with reading. You can read a book, you can read articles, you can read, I don't know, forum posts about your favourite hobby. You can read lots of things and it really depends what you want to, to be able to do in terms of your reading skills. If, if you want them for work, you probably do need some industry specific vocabulary as well. But I think we can get very um, trapped in some of the activities that people automatically associate with gaining a certain skill. I know for me, like with listening skills, people automatically say, oh, series and you know, find a good series on Netflix in the language that you like, but I don't actually watch a lot of series. <laughs> so for me, that, that doesn't work. And there are some other reasons why that doesn't work for me as well, because I can't read the subtitles. But really, there are so many other things you can do to improve your listening skills. And the same with talking to people. You don't need to go to some big event if you don't want to. You can find someone to talk to. You can talk to them online. You can do lots of things, but it doesn't have to be what everybody else is doing. And it's the same with apps, like some people really like certain apps and they hate other apps. And that's, that's OK for everyone. It's, it's good for you to find an app that will help you with vocabulary or that will help you to test your knowledge at building sentences or improving your listening skills. There are so many on the market. and It should be easy to find one or two that, that you like. And that may not be the ones that your friends like. Another thing that's been important for me with my other languages and which I've certainly tried to do even from right at the beginning with Romanian is to make real human connections. Um, because with Turkish, once I moved away from a place where I where I did connect with more people, I, I stopped using that particular um, group. It, it was an online group for there, but I, I lost the, the connection with people and it just became like a theory exercise. Whereas it's really good to have people with whom you can use the language Ideally, if you're using it at work, not just work people, because there's always a bit of a higher expectation there. If, if they're colleagues or customers or contacts, then you can feel under a bit more pressure. So if you find some people that speak the language that have nothing to do with your job, that can be more helpful. But have real connections, real reasons to use the language in, a, in an everyday situation. I find that really helps me because I want to know someone how someone is or I want to ask questions about what, what they told me last time and it, it makes me use the language without really thinking oh I have to write some Romanian today it's it's just becomes part of my day because I want to carry on that conversation okay so then kind of moving on from that apart from speaking with other people making the language part of your everyday if you see it when you're using social media if it's um, if you maybe get some newsletters in that language if you um, come across it maybe you might put your phone in the other language for a while but doing some things that make that language appear in your life just as part of your everyday life that can really help you because then you don't have to to look for it so if you if you like some pages on LinkedIn or follow some accounts or Facebook that post in that language in this case in English then you won't have to look for content in English and it's the same with me with Romanian if it just appears in my life in front of me then I'm more likely to read it than if I have to spend time looking for it. And then I found some things that I want to leave behind so all of those things are things that I did with German and Turkish to some extent although I didn't do so well with the finding real human connections thing um, but all of these were, were things I've done and I want to keep doing so now the things that I want to stop doing or not to do when I'm learning Romanian. Don't punish yourself after bad experiences. I think some of us do that more than others, but if I didn't do as well as I would like to have, or if I didn't know some words, or if I just felt that I I didn't do myself justice because I I went very quiet, that's what I tend to do if I don't if I don't know something, I just become like um 
like a, a hedgehog and I curl up with my spines out and nobody can come near me. But I, if you do that and then you feel bad about it, you're only really punishing yourself because most other people either didn't notice or they, they just thought you didn't have anything else to say. It's not great because you didn't say everything you wanted to say, but it's not the end of the world if you didn't know something or if you couldn't be the person you wanted to be this time because there's always another time. There's always a next time. So, yeah, I want to be a bit kinder to myself this time. OK, I didn't know something or OK, it just wasn't my day today, but I'm going to try again tomorrow. So that's OK. And it's not something to be miserable about for the rest of the evening. Second thing, which I really did with Turkish, and it was part of my <laughs> downfall, or part of the reason why I wasn't overall very successful in all areas, is don't neglect the thing that you like the least. And with me, it's always going to be speaking. With you, it might be something else. I, I have clients who don't like listening or who don't like reading or who find it really difficult to do activities that help them to improve their vocabulary. But I also have a lot of clients who find speaking more difficult, not because they don't know the information. A lot of the time they do, but we can sometimes have fears and anxiety around speaking because we want to do a really good job. And yeah, that, that means that sometimes we want to neglect this skill because it's the thing that we don't really enjoy. And I certainly relate to that because I did it as well. And I'm really trying not to do that with Romanian, to, to put myself in situations where I do have to speak to people um, in one-to-one -one lessons or speaking to, speaking to friends on the telephone or finding some local people with whom I can go for a coffee or all these things that push me out of my comfort zone a bit because I don't want to leave this one skill behind. I don't want to develop my reading and writing and listening and then have speaking skills that are really poor by comparison. So it's really important not to neglect the thing that you don't like very much. Three, don't think that the only way for you to feel good enough or competent or like you're getting somewhere is to make no mistakes. If you set the, the bar so high you can't make any mistakes today, that's really, you know, that's... That's really difficult. And I think a lot of this comes back to, you know, school and how many percent did you get in the test? And you know, was this the highest mark? If you didn't get 100 percent, what did you get wrong? And whilst it's good to, to understand what you've got wrong so that you can do better next time, it's not good if your whole sense of how you feel about yourself depends on how many things you got wrong today. Because if you're trying, if you're doing your best, that really should be enough. It shouldn't just be, oh, well, you know, you, you're a failure because you only got 90% or 80, 70, whatever it is. Even if it's high number, sometimes that can make us not feel quite good enough because we're, we're looking at what's missing. But sometimes I think it's really good to look at what we succeeded in and what we did well. Not, not as a way to lower the standards, but just as a way to see our progress from the, the standpoint of, well, I didn't know that yesterday or last week or I couldn't have done that last month. Um... So yes, you should definitely look forward, but it's also good to not only measure yourself by what you could have done better, because we can always do better. In everything we do, there is always a chance to improve, because no one's perfect. But I think that's something that I really want to take into the Romanian, that yeah, if I've only been doing this for 10 months or something, so I'm not going to know everything, and I'm going to make some mistakes, and that's, that's life, but... It's better to focus on the things that went well and, and to learn from the things that didn't rather than to let them um, determine how I feel about myself. Um, the next thing, don't make it harder for people to get to know the real you because <laughs> it can be. If you, if you become really shy and you're not a shy person or if you change the way you act because you maybe don't feel as confident, some people will expect this and they'll know that you're learning and that's maybe how you deal with the... The learning situation but it is better to really be yourself so people can know whether they like you based on the real real you um i remember at the weekend i was talking to somebody in romanian and my husband came upstairs and he he went back down again but then he said uh how my voice sounded so much different i was talking to somebody that i didn't know very well so that that will also play a, a role if i've been talking to one of my friends or my teacher then maybe it would have been different I, I think it would have been different but um it was interesting that somebody who didn't even speak the language said that my lang my voice was different and the way I communicated was different and I I know that and it's something I want to change but I think for all of us if we're 
learning a language or improving a language, it's good to really try to be ourselves. It's quite hard to um, to maybe communicate your sense of humour in another language or um, maybe when I'm learning other languages, I'm not quite as direct as I would be in English because I am quite... I, I say what I think and I... <laughs> can be quite quite direct and sometimes I maybe try to find a, a nicer way to say things in another language because I'm not sure how they'll come across but really people need to know the real us um, so that's always something to, to strive for and that's something I haven't done in the past like with Turkish I don't think anybody who only spoke to me in Turkish really ever got to know who, who I am if we didn't use another language and I think we want to make a good impression. I think we want people to to see us in the best light, especially if we're using a language for a, a, in a business context, or may, maybe just not. If we're looking for friends, maybe we want that too. But it, it needs to be honest, and I don't think anyone goes out of the way to be dishonest um, in relation to this. I certainly didn't, but I know that with German, for example, I've I've participated in very lively email discussions and then turned up, and people couldn't really put the person they were seeing who was quite quiet and not saying anything, together with the persona that I built up in the email communication. And that persona was was more me, it was more who I am. Um, and I think that's a learning prog- process. You can't do it overnight. Well, if you can, you're super lucky. Um, but for most of us, it takes time, but it's something to strive towards and something to, to bring the version of us in the new language, closer to to who we really are, to to try and really convey all our um, qualities and um, our complete personality as well. So those are the things I've learned. It's work in progress. Everyone has better days and not so good days, but I thought these are some things that I've learned, some things that I want to change now so that I can have a, a more productive learning experience, but also a more enjoyable one. Because learning should be fun. It's hard sometimes. You have to do things that are a bit difficult for you sometimes. But I believe that learning should should be fun as well. Because otherwise it's really hard to be motivated for something that you don't enjoy. So if you want to find out um, more about how I can help you to make that learning process fun, then you can contact me. I've got a range of courses available Or if you just want some more information, I have a monthly English with Kirsty newsletter. I'm planning some new things for later in the year. And the first, the best way to be the first to find out about those and to get other articles or information about learning languages, um, specific business English information or communication skills information is to sign up for the newsletter, which you can do just on the podcast page, englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast. Or the show notes page for this episode, which is which is <laughs> englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast slash episode 198. Hope that was useful. Have a good week and enjoy learning English. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the English with Kirsty podcast. If you have any questions or comments, my email address is kirsty at englishwithkirsty.com go to www.englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast where you'll find information about the individual episodes.